Welcome to England Scotland. I'm Andrew and today we're going to be tying this. The Curly Zulu. Without question one of our favourite flies when we're fishing for wild brown trout on the hill locks in Scotland. It's also a brilliant fly for rainbow trout in our reservoirs. Let's jump down to the vise and I'll show you how it's done. Okay so first things first let's talk about the hook. It is a full and mill heavyweight champ size 10. I tend to tie these size 10 and 12. Uh, I like to use them as my top dropper in a team of two or three flies and uh, th those sizes work for me. Uh, tie them smaller if you want um, but honestly these in those two sizes they'll catch plenty of fish for you. Um, materials wise I'm using some red thread. This is actually Semperfly and it's a 12 volt. Uh, I like to use a thinner thread uh, when I'm trying to put lots of different stuff on the fly. Um, so that's just a little hint there. Anyway, let's get started. For the tail, we're going to be using some Glow Bright Floss. That's a number three, um, bright red. And what we're going to do is take a length. I mean, I, I usually try and do a few flies at a time, so I'm taking a length that's about maybe 12 inches. I'm going to take that length of Glow Bright Floss and I'm going to fold it four times. Fold it in half four times. It's all personal preference in terms of how bushy you want the tail. Um, I like them to be nice and, and pronounced but not too bushy. So if you fold it four times what you'll end up with is a little section like that. You can see that. So first things first, we are going to put our thread on the hook, just secure your tag end in, take off the excess, wind down to the base hook, um, tail length, you're looking for about the length of the hook. Um, off the back. And it's really important when you're tying this style of fly to remember to leave enough space for your hackle at the front. You should always have that in your mind when you're tying this style of fly. The last thing you want to do is get to the eye of the hook and it's crowded and you're struggling to put the hackle on so always bear that in mind. And all I do now with this is get my measure and cut it. And then you can rough it up if you've got a dubbing brush. Um, you see plenty of people using a toothbrush, but just anything, a bit of Velcro, anything to rough it up. And um, really I just tidied up there, I didn't really need to. Um, what we're gonna do now is take some wire, and this is, um, soft wire by uni and it's a medium and wait I'm going to tie that on the length of the body I'm going to try and keep your thread wraps fairly smooth because what we're going to do is create a tinsel body and therefore we want to try and keep the body as free as we can from lumps and bumps not that the fish will notice that much but it's always worth bearing in mind your wire in. Now for the body itself what I've got is Opal Mirage and it's a large. I find it better by a large size when you're making tinsel bodies um, because it'll help you cover the fly more effectively uh, as opposed to a, a thinner tinsel. So I'm just going to lay that inside the hook. Catch it in. Back down to build a tiny wee bit of volume into the body. Over there you can see I'm kind of working maybe two or three mil at the eye where I'm stopping deliberately. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue 
and I'm just going to dab that onto the body of the fly before I wind the tinsel up just to add a little bit of durability. I'm going to bring my tinsel up. Make a slight overlap as you bring it up so that you're creating full coverage with the tinsel. It's plenty. Turn over the top. Keep the tension on your thread. A few turns over. Lift it up a few turns onto the hook and you can cut that away. Tidy up. So next thing is a cock cackle, it's just a Chinese cock cackle. Now what you're looking for is barbs that are roughly the length of the hook. So I'm going to take a few off of the bottom of this just till I get the length that I like. It's personal preference again and you'll have a million people telling you different ways to do it. This is the way that works for me and it catches fish. So give it a go. Um, so I'm just laying that with the concave side facing away on the side of the hook. A few turns to make sure it's nice and secure. I should mention I'm using the pre-waxed thread by Semperfly. If I wasn't I'd probably be putting wax on the thread to make sure that I had some grip. I'm going to grab my hackle pliers. I'm going to take two straight turns <coughs> right in front. And I'm going to wind the hackle down the body and open turns. Evenly spaced as much as you can you get towards the back and then going to try and take a straight turn right at the back and then lose. Don't worry if this happens, it will if you're heavy handed like me. Um. So like I say I'm going to take two straight turns at the front more gently than I did the last time. Then I'm going to take the hackle down and open turns. Just be patient. Helps when you're not filming yourself. Um, then a straight turn at the back. And then when you get to this point you're going to grab your wire. You're going to cross over that hackle until you've locked it into place. So I'm going to try and the hackle tips come off. I've got that hackle just. Um, so what I'm going to do now is bring that wire forward. And what that's doing is trapping in the stem as I go the opposite way back up the hook. So take a turn over the top and then pull it 90 degrees wind over that. And I always like to do a couple of turns onto the hook and then wind and break that off. So I'm sure that won't happen to you, the hackles that I'm using are fairly, that one's fairly old so it does tend to get a bit brittle, you can always dampen it um, if you want to try and bring some suppleness back. So as you can see what we've got is a palmered cock hackle down the body over the tinsel with a wire supporting it and a red tail. And the last step is to add a hen hackle. This one is White and Farms, it's a 4B, absolutely love these. It's the same again, I'm looking for barbs that are um, roughly the length of the hook. We want to try and cloak this as much as we can. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tip of the feather, finger and thumb. You can use your hackle pliers for that. I'm just going to brush it back till I find the length of the barb that I want. Looks about right. Brush them all back and expose the tip. And then what I'm going to do is cut that so it's about two or three mil. I'll show you that. <clears throat> That's my tie end point. So I'm going to lay that again, con concave side away from me. I can't speak tonight. Um, and I'm going to tie that in by the tip. Two or three turns over the top, fold that front wee bit back, wrap over that. And that should hold nicely. Bring your thread to the eye. Get your hackle pliers again. Now again, you can either dress this heavily or you can dress it quite sparsely. It's all about personal preference. First thing to do is just gently tease those fibres back a little bit because it will help you in the long run. And you want to take your first set and see how fold I've got them in the finger and thumb and I'm just pulling them back and I'm going to start wrapping. And as it comes up I'm going to do the same again. It's one full turn. Don't worry if a couple go forward you can take care of that at the end. I'm just going to repeat that. For me I like them quite heavy so I'm going to do probably three full turns, two, three, until I get to here. Then I'm going to take my thread up over the stem, keep the tension on the thread at all times. I'm just going to lock that. I'm going to keep, keep the stem where it is, I'm going to pull everything back, I'm going to bring my thread right to the eye. And I'm just going to start to form a small head winding back onto the hackle very slightly, which will help create the shape that you're looking for. And you'll see we're using the thinner thread, it helps me create a smaller head shape. You don't want this to be massively bulky at the front of the fly. And the last thing to do is whip finish. I like to do two, and I'm going to do the second one over a wee bit of super glue. thread away, find that tip and just slide your scissors into the stock, don't cut your, don't shut your scissors, just slide them into it. There we have it, Pearly Zulu. Now if you want to add a little bit of sheen to the head, which I like to do, especially if I'm sharing it on social media, um, I like to use um, some UV resin, so this is Golf Thin Man, and all I'm going to do is just put a tiny wee bit on the head area. I'm going to get my bodkin and I'm just going to tease it. Just be careful you don't get it on the feathers. Uh, a wee bit won't hurt but try and avoid it if you can. I'm just going to brush that all the way around. And hit it with the torch. There we are. That's the Pearly Zulu. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, your support's greatly appreciated. There'll be plenty more videos coming from loads of great fly tyres from around Scotland and beyond. So we'd love it if you'd join us and subscribe to the channel. And uh, see you the next time. Cheers.